Ellen Sandal is the member for Melbourne in the Victorian Parliament. She's the deputy leader of the Victorian Greens and she's their arts spokesperson. Ellen, thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. It's good to be with you. Could you start by telling me why the Greens believe that arts is such an important part of our identity as Victorians? Well, it makes life worth living, doesn't it? Just that arts and culture, it's just so fundamental to who we are as humans, is, is my belief. And it just adds that, um, that common humanity to our experience. And if we're not funding it and we're not investing in it and we don't have it in our lives, it just makes for such a poorer cultural life for all of us. And particularly, I guess we feel that being in Melbourne, which has always been kind of the cultural and artistic hub of the country. And it's the reason why so many people move here and want to live here and spend time here. Um, I think so many people wouldn't live in Melbourne if it wasn't for that cultural life. And now that we're missing it, people are starting to realise just how, how, how much poorer a city we are without it. So if we are, and I think we are, the cultural hub of the country in Melbourne, uh, as the member for Melbourne and as the Greens spokesperson for the arts, that sounds like a pretty big responsibility. It does. And also just being the local member for Melbourne, <coughs> my electorate is all those inner city suburbs, you know, from Kensington through to Carlton, North Melbourne, um, the CBD. So a lot of places where a lot of those arts venues actually exist. And so working with them as their local member, but then also having that additional responsibility of being the arts portfolio holder at, at the state level for the Greens. Um, yeah, it's just, it's such a privilege. And how have you as, as the arts spokesperson for the Greens and also as the member for Melbourne in, in, in the Victorian Parliament, how have you helped preserve and, and grow the vibrant arts scene that we've got in Melbourne? Early on, um, I was elected six years ago, so kind of quite early on in my time as the member for Melbourne, we had a few really big fights on our hands, particularly around preserving spaces, um, artistic and cultural spaces like the Palace Theatre, um, you know, the, the old Metro on Burke Street, um, places that, uh, that have heritage value and therefore cultural value, but also live music venues that were being lost. And we've lost so many artistic theatre and live music venues across the city because of that profit motive and, and big developers just coming in and wanting to destroy it and build apartments when we're losing so much and government's not stepping in. And so we've had, um, you know, a couple of really big fights that we've lost, like that theatre, like the palace. Um, and I've got a, actually, I think it's here, where I've got it um, wrapped up in here. I've got a little um, a tile from the palace from when it was destroyed. Um, one of the, let me see if I can find it. For you. Yeah, sure. One of the, one of the. Um, oh, wow the activists and artists who was um, salvaging a lot of the material when we were trying to save the palace sent me this as a little reminder. Oh. <laughs> so where would that have been originally? Um, I think this was probably originally some of the, the inside. So the, the palace, the, um, the main heritage value was actually on the inside, the kind of balustrades and the tiling and everything that was part of that beautiful theatre on the inside rather than necessarily yeah. the outside of it. And of course, a lot of people my age remember it not as Palace Theatre, but as Metro Nightclub. Yeah. And of course, it was a theatre well before it was a nightclub too, so. Well, I think it's had a few different lives and all of yeah. them adding so much to the cultural heart of our city. But so we've been involved in a lot of those big fights. Um, um, more recently, we've also been really involved in standing up for the live music scene. And you know, when we talk about arts and culture, obviously, it's the whole gamut, right, from makers, visual artists, musicians, like people who actually work at events and festivals, like there's just so much goes on in Melbourne, not to mention, um, you know, people making theatre and films and, and things like that. Well, I guess the, the challenge there, Ellen, is that um, those levers, as, as you described them, are great for the landlords and the owners of those creative spaces of those theatres and, and, and performance venues. Um, but they still 
there still needs to be another mechanism in place for the artists and the producers and the makers, the creators to, to, to actually benefit. Yeah, that's right. And we need to act at so many different levels. So at a, um, at a local and state government level, we've also released a policy about revitalising our high streets or our shopping strips. Um, and in particular, a program where we could actually connect artists with cheap venue spaces now that we've got retail really struggling and a lot of empty shops unfortunately we'll probably mm. see that into the future can we turn those some of those things into artistic spaces and not just give that rate relief to the landlords but actually have a program where we're then making them pass that on to artists in, in the form of cheap rent or having the council broker that so that that artists aren't paying very much rent for those spaces there's lots of creative things that can be done if you've got kind of state government local government working together but fundamentally, we do need a shift at a federal level as well, because that's where the, the big money is and that's where we can get things like a living wage for artists. And from, from, from my perspective, um, that's the top end of town. Um, then there's all of the community theatre groups and the, the singing groups and, and, and all of the other grassroots arts organisations um, that so important to to our community because that's how people connect with one another that's how people express themselves creatively it's not necessarily how they make a living although some people use that as a stepping stone to get into a career as a professional um performer or or or, or, or working in the arts um how do you think the state government and how do you think the greens can help the state government better support grassroots arts organizations yeah, well, it's just about um, having a, a different emphasis, isn't it, and a different focus when governments are making those funding decisions and making sure that it isn't all just going to the NGV or those big institutions, as important as they are and as we want to keep them afloat. But um, it's just about making sure that we actually have criteria in any arts grants or whatever around diversity and also around making sure that a lot of that's going to the grassroots and... It's been disappointing to see, for example, La Mama that I mentioned, um, we've done a lot of work with them and you know, they haven't got that, that federal funding that they had been relying on. But where does that funding come from? Well, we have the money. That's the thing. We have the money. It's not a matter of not having the money. It's a matter of where are we prioritising it. So we're always building roads or big infrastructure projects. That's a choice. That's not just a given. Um, and these are incredibly expensive projects. And yes, we need roads. Yes, we need rail. But the amount of money that, that goes to that compared to the amount of money that goes to the arts is just so stark. Compare, when you compare it with the number of people that are actually employed in the different industries. So do you think the state government's letting us down? Look, I think the state government has filled a lot of holes where the where the federal government has left big holes. So um, I do think they've done some pretty good work and they understand the value of creative industries much more than the federal government does. So, um, you know, we've had some success with the live music funding, for example. So they are doing that and they are moving in the right direction. But of course, you can always do more, always. But then the teachers will tell you they need more money, the nurses will need you, they need more money. Um, and there are so many, hospitality, retail, everyone, particularly um, in COVID times, everyone's suffering. Why, why should arts be prioritised, do you think? A few reasons. Firstly, particularly around COVID, as I mentioned, the arts were the first hit and probably the last to come back. And so even after hospitality. So that is a special case. I believe. Um, uh, secondly, I think that the amount of jobs that you get for spending a dollar in the arts versus the amount of jobs you get for spending another, a dollar in almost any other industry shows its value in an economic sense and in a COVID recovery sense, let alone just in a cultural sense. So as, um, as grassroots arts organisations, what can we do to reframe this thinking? Look, there's lots of different things in terms of just making your voice heard. And people ask me this all the time, how can we how can we get more attention on our issue? And it's really just that bread and butter campaigning that we know works. It's writing to your local member of parliament. It is writing to the minister. It is making a call to your local member of parliament, asking for a meeting with them. It's 
getting stories in the media if you have good case studies of people who have been particularly impacted or businesses or organisations that are doing it tough or the good work that you're doing. Uh, it's just all of those little things adds up. Uh, and then I know that some artists have been running some pretty good campaigns online around funding, um, like the live music people did. It's all of that stuff. And we'll keep fighting in parliament, but you also need those voices on the outside who are the people on the ground who are most affected, talking to government and just constantly telling them because they're, they're constantly getting it from from many other vested interests. So we just need to be as loud. Ellen, thank you so much for advocating for the arts and, and thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.